including toys in little Kinder baggies. And he would grab them. He'd take them home. He'd go, do you need this one? No? All right. Do you need this one? All right. He actually had, because he did it for, uh, I think it was for Christmas, he had a little uh, piece of paper that he drew out with all the different coins that you needed to have a complete set. Yeah. And um, when he found one, he, oh, that's it. He would take double sided, or he would flip tape over because they didn't have double sided tape back then. Flip it over and stick it on there. He got me a complete set of coins from the garbage. From wow. the garbage. The man oh. never stole anything in his life. It's, a, it's incredible. We had a Lego manufacturing company in town. Like, Every one of my friends had a big, huge chest full of Lego that people yeah. brought home. They just throw them out. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like whenever whenever I was growing up, you know, I had, you know, the first 10 years of my life, I grew up in rural eastern Kentucky, and I had no idea that, you know, just a couple hours away in Cincinnati was where, you know, Star Wars toys were yeah. born. You know, it, it I, I had no idea up until like the early 2000s Whenever I started finding out about toy companies and everything, as a, as I was becoming an adult collector, uh, you know, and and at that time, you know, uh, Hasbro and uh, and Kenner were kind of working hands and hand in hand with the uh, Beast Wars toys. Um, well, I guess they yeah. what did they just hand them off to Kenner or or what what was the deal with that? Now I uh, the, the, the bigger I, the bigger I story is they, they wanted changed, this. they changed the name. Where they went from Kenner to Kenner Hasbro, Hasbro Kenner to Hasbro. Is that they, true? They just they wanted to. Um, I don't know about the technical answer to that part, but when the Rhode Island office, who also had what we called then boys toys, they were doing GI Joe, Tonka, a few different things, Conan, I think the Stargate stuff. Oh. Um, Kenner was also doing Batman and, and Waterworld and action figures, right? So it was kind of a, a, a decision to let's put all the boys' toys over in Cincinnati. That's where we'll have all the boys' toys sculpting, all the boys' toys marketing know-how. And that's how S Cincinnati inherited the first wave of Beast Wars, essentially. That was all designed and done well, well in advance of them showing up in '95 the mid middle of 95 but wave two was certainly done in cincinnati um well what i would call wave two you guys might call wave three but um uh so that's how that stuff got out there it was a practical business decision to have all the boys action stuff in cincinnati and that's when they moved tonka and some girls toys to rhode island and that's why my little pony is made in rhode island and all that stuff. yeah i know uh early on whenever i was becoming an adult collector and and i was going to the message boards and trying to learn as much as i could uh, a lot of people were talking about because you know on the back of the package at the bottom on the beast wars it would say kenner instead of yeah. instead of hasbro and i know right. a lot of the discussion back then is like well after uh generation two kind of flopped and uh and transformers kind of kind of went away for like a almost a year year and a half uh, Hasbro's like here, you know, we're we're done with this. See what you can do with it. Uh, I'd, I'd yeah, well, the 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 buyers were done with it too, and it was kind of uh, let's just let's see what we can do with it. Reinvigorate you know? it. So yeah. it. Yeah, it was really, and so it didn't matter. It was like uh, we're reinvigorating it. We're changing it to beasts, yeah. and let's let some new guys have it because we've tried everything. You know, the English, the England team had 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 some of the G two stuff at the end. Um, you know, it had been around Hasbro Transformers. It had been kicked around a bit. Uh, but, but Beast Wars worked out better than some of those other... Kind of makes me wonder, though, you know, about, you know, in conjunction with uh, uh, the toys that made a show, how much of that will be talked about on the, on the, on the, on the show whenever it airs? Uh, I don't know. I talked a lot. I mean, I spent most of my time talking about the philosophy, which you guys have probably heard a billion times from me at different bot cons and things about how you know what they represented and you know i think i think the movie component may be a bigger bit than than we might know 
um, just how did that come about? Because outside of, well, outside of anything, that's probably the biggest movie that came from a toy brand, right? Not a, not a movie that sold a lot of toys. Um, so I think that flip might be part of what they talk about. But I don't know. I don't know if they'll be able to get to the detail that you guys would find something super new. You're going to find new anecdotes and stories, well, but maybe not. Stuff that, be, right? Yeah, that that could be interesting because that stuff is amazing. I mean, uh, back then those models were made out of wood. You know. Um, oh, I wish he could have. Uh, well, and they he, were. Saw I saw a two up uh, Piranacon. You know what's that guy's head? The big guy's head. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just, right. it's this big. It's like a softball made of wood, and that's Ooh. the combiner head. And it was just cool as cool. I mean. And you know, that's got stuff. like one of the coolest designs too of all the combiner heads, the like the fin yeah, off of the side. Or uh, Japanese influence. Yeah, yeah, totally. And yeah. the VHS tape he talked about. And there's a battleship. That's the first time I've actually of heard stuff. of that. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, so just like they made the mini tapes, um, and then Microman had like the normal cassette tapes. Uh, they had a full scale VHS tape that you could put in a VH- VHS player. And it had the stickers on it and everything. It was really cool. Oh wow! Um, I, don't, I, I don't know why that didn't come out back in the day, but what did, what did it transform thing. into? Uh, like a robot, just like just not unlike uh, Soundwave or, or Rumble. Yeah. You know, kind of that classic pull down the legs. But it actually down. had a. I've seen, I've seen uh, early, early like a, a, a flashlight. Um, yeah. <clears throat> there was some other stuff. That just you know, because back then it was micro uh, micro change, which was ordinary things changing. But I'd never seen that uh, um, uh, VHS cassette. That's and kind it, of... a lot of this stuff comes from the uh, Micro Man era, <coughs> was right. Transformers. So oh, some there of the you are. and you know, in different colors and, and all of that. Right. Uh, well, I was that was the longest journey to actually put some of the stuff and change the, the color. Yeah, from, yeah, from the microchange line. Yeah, and then there was other things because I I, I don't know because microchange had a lot of like like Browning and this that and the other to where there were more guns, but they they yeah. kept Megatron but not the others. I yeah. always that was weird. But it's you like know, if you, you kept know, them, keep them all. You know, Aaron, going to the point you was, uh, was talking though, how we've all as, as Transformers collectors we've talked about it for years and 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 delved into the minutia of the brand as it were but something about this uh, this uh uh this this show coming up i'm i'm really excited about it you know uh, just because it's going to show me things that i i you know like the uh the the warehouse and uh at uh, takara you know, I've 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 always wanted to see that. You know, as as yeah. an adult, you know, I've seen exterior pictures, you know, posted on 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 the internet and everything. Uh, but you know, being on the internet for some what twenty year twenty past fifteen to twenty years, uh, there's so much that we've talked about and 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 so much information that's already been out there. Uh, just to have something new to to. Uh, Sure. Yeah, I, I'm hoping it sets a bit of the record, or at least a, a something you can, we can now point to and go. What are you into? Oh, I'm into Transformers. Check this out. I, if you don't know much about it, re- watch this hour long thing, and, and you bring you up to speed about what I'm into. You know, because well, well, sometimes it's hard. It's hard to explain to people, you know, what what's going on with some of these brands if they're sure. not into it. Not only the toys, just what's going on with that well, brand. Look at all the the people that that commented on the show that are Transformers fans that went. I didn't know about this show. Mm-hmm. I need to yeah. look into this. So yeah. I mean, it, there's always something new. You know, there's yeah. always a new, um, you know, a, a different angle or whatever. And if if you really are a fan of it, you know, I want to see. I want to see all of it. Well. You know? it's, like, it's like me. I mean, I'm I'm well, a hardcore. I want to see what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm a hardcore Transformers fan. You know, 
that's my that's my thing. It's it's the the thing that I concentrate on the most. But boil it down. I am a toy fan. You know, there's there is that, that's the big thing. There's yeah. Yeah, I can go into a toy aisle looking for a transformer, and I'll I'll pass by another toy, and I'm like, hey, and it catches my eye. I will pick it up, look at it. Heck, I've even been known to buy one from time to time. Uh, you know, it's you know I've got I've got the new Voltron over here. Think that thing's awesome. You know, from from you Playmates. Know, uh, some of the turtles, I've got those. Well, I mean, it, it's kind of like when, when Brycey goes down the beer aisle. <laughs> and so he's looking for the, the, the wheat beer, the wheat beer, and then he grabs, you know... Uh, a a, beer. A, a, Non-American a, beer. There, there you go. So, I mean, he just he goes for something different. You know, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Not that much. Come on now. What? You're Canadian, aren't you? Just gotta yeah, have some yeah, Putin yeah. with it. Look, they call I'm it an, they call it anti freeze. Not there. being disrespectful <laughs> at all, but every single Canadian I ever met, they drink. It. You know, there so. was a question I wanted to ask uh, Mr. Folkweiss on the show, and it was in honor of uh, well, it, it was in honor of Don. Uh, I was going to ask him. <laughs> Is there going to be a Headmaster RC segment on the Transformer episode? <laughs> the the two-hour version. There's a whole segment in the two-hour. had to get cut. Yeah. To get cut. <laughs> Here's the thing. If you had Don on there, every other question would have been that. Why? Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> no, we, we love you, Don. We love you. That's why we, that's why we asked, would have asked. It was, it was on the table, but just didn't get a chance to ask. Uh, all I can say is, is what could have been, what should have been. But, you know, looking at toys, you know, I mean, back in, you know, my childhood, uh, I started out with uh, He-Man uh, and, and Hot Wheels was, uh, was my two big things. And then became, and then I, I became obsessed with Transformers. And then when Action Masters rolled around, I, you know, I started getting away from those got into dino riders which absolutely still to this day captivate me i did tyco just just fold or or what do you know i, I don't know but I, I sit there and talk about that i think they got I, out of action right, i never saw those and i wish i had because they, the so riders, so awesome. they wanted to compete with the kenners and hasbros so they stuck with the cars after yeah. that but I mean, they did so well with the, with the Dino Riders. Uh, I mean, here I was at the, by the time they came out, I was, I guess, what's considered a tweener. You know, uh, you know, I was, uh, I was an early teen. Don't, but don't, don't don't call yourself a wiener. It's okay. Yeah, no, you don't, you don't have tweener, to do tweener, tweener. Oh, tweener. I know, I know, you're obsessed with wieners, but uh, <laughs> uh, just. The size of mine, but I mean, it's beside the point. I mean, I don't know why you're saying that. Why? why? why you, you just need that something that's Swedish made. Is all you need. <laughs> but I, look, I've got the uh, the, the Detoff shelves. They're Swedish made, right? I mean, I've got them. <laughs> I got them over here too. What are you trying to say? <laughs> but anyway, but you know the as as a in between, you know. Uh, late uh, early uh, early teenager you know i was i was growing out of toys but they were still interesting enough to captivate me dino riders is one of those things that like uh, you know i kept asking for every year for christmas uh even up into my late uh, into my mid teens um you know i remember a, being a junior for uh, for in high school and my mom asking me well, what what would you like for christmas this year and and invariably on the list would be a Dino Rider. I want a Dino Rider. You know, I, I never did get that T Rex, and I never did get, get the Dipl Diplodocus, but I got got the Triceratops, got the Taurosaurus. You know, got a bunch of the little. Don't, don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. I got Ed two hundred nine for my sixteenth birthday. It's all right. We, <laughs> we, we kept we got our we kept our toys going late, <laughs> or, or it never ends. Well, I, I never really really quit liking toys. It's just that you know pressure peer pressure and everything gets to you and you know you just put them away and and you grow up and then you rediscover them and you're like and now here i am 42 getting ready to be 43 and i'm like toys have been a part of my life since 
I was, you know, as an adult since I was like 23, you know, so uh, just 20 years, you know, <laughs> and, and here I am, I've still got, got the love, you know, it, it just, you know, net, this Netflix series, one of the things that made me, that stood out to me just watching the first episode, whenever he's talking about Star Wars, um, you could see that it was produced by a person with passion for the toy. Uh, you know, the, uh, he didn't, they didn't, uh, this show didn't have the approach like, uh, like collector, uh, collection intervention. Uh, uh, you know, we all know how they portrayed David on there. Uh, yeah. he was, he was, um, he was a laughing stock and, yeah, you know what they didn't do? They didn't. I mean, this is the perception that you know, right? We hear it, or we see it, or it comes up. The living in the basement, mom's basement, all that crap, right? Mm -hmm. They didn't. They didn't get into any of that. You know, it was nice. It's it was just like about treated the toys. like it was a informational. You know, uh, because yeah, it, treated they, it with respect, and and that yeah. was something that that really stood out to me. Uh, and, yeah. and I, and I really appreciate it about well, the they, series. They, they did the extra mile. Like some of those other shows, they don't really, they kind of talk about it in that general way. I mean, when they went and talked to the, you know, Jim Kipling, the old lawyer, you know, that, that guy's a kind of by the book square dude. I mm -hmm. worked down the hall from him. I mean, it was great to see him again, but, uh, when you talk to people like that, you have an authentic, uh, position when you tell that story because it's real mm -hmm. talking to the real people um, versus that just being yeah, toys cool and we love them and, well there's you know, this one came even, out and this even one on came netflix out. there's there's a star wars show on there i can't remember for the life of me what it was what the name of it is but it's about star wars toys and the collectors and i want to say it's like an hour and a half long uh and yeah. The more I watched that, the more uncomfortable I felt because it's like these guys are like portrayed as nerds, you know, and yeah. and and it's like the love behind the toys just isn't there. And I was embarrassed by it, and I really feared that for this series. And I'm glad that I was wrong that it that it turned out to be such a good, well produced series. Well, we're all looking forward to Transformers, that's for sure. Yeah, but you can't look at it like that. I mean, I don't... And, and I was trying to talk to him when I said, you know, about the Pawn Stars, and he kind of got a little offended about that. That's not what I meant. I mean, I know that Rick gets on there and talks about the value and this and the other. I'm more looking at, like, the, the historical value that his guests have come on and talk about, you know? I mean, anyone else look at it for that that reason? When you they get on there and they do the little cut out and they come back in with the trivia questions, and, it, and it's about history. Mm -hmm. It's about the importance of the item. That's really what I meant. Um, and I'm sorry that he kind of. Well, I don't know if he. Uh, I don't know if he had visions of the mo uh, of the time well, that. I mean, and I understand that. I do. That Pawn Stars did have Transformers on there, and they and they basically went on there and looked at it. And it's like. Wow. Uh, well, I'd have to part all this out. I'm. I can't. I can't give you no money for it. And it's like. Well, I mean, everyone knows the big running gag is is you know you go to Pawn Stars and you have a hundred dollar item and Rick offers you ten bucks or whatever you know whatever, because mm -hmm. it's all brought down into you know a monetary value. That's not what I meant by that. I meant by the you know it's on the History Channel. It's on the History Channel for a reason. It's all about history, and that's why they do the little the cutouts with the. You know, which one of these was in, you know, whatever. You know, they do that because it's a, it's kind of a learning thing. And I really think it would be neat to see a show like this in that venue. Mm -hmm. Open to everyone. You know, not just Netflix. Not well, what, what, I, what, I'm, what I'm, what I'm interested in about uh, the Transformer episode is just how deep are they going to go? You know, I mean, we know that we're they're going to go to to Cara. The problem and, is, is like you said, if you go too deep, you're going to lose a lot of people. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, 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 yeah, but they'll be able to talk about Japan huh? as a concept. But yeah, mass 
television for the minute that knows about this. You made it for the masses that that know very little. Yeah, you, unfortunately for you guys, you Lauren have dissipated a lot longer and a lot I deeper. Knew. So it is always going to be hard to to surprise or tell you guys something you didn't didn't know. So I'm hoping the Japanese side of that is is interesting, and I, you know, I'm who knows what they'll say about the movie or who will even talk on the movie. Uh, that's not necessarily what you guys want, but maybe some answers could come. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know. Well, I, you know, it's like uh, Rick said before. You know, whenever he he was a fan and then went to work at Hasbro and then he saw the way it is in Japan, you know, saw them being made. And he said the magic was gone. You know, me, oh, when you see him make the sausage, it is not pretty. And that, yeah. you work at a toy company, you guys have engaged me at bot cons and stuff. You know, it's not, I, I, I could never participate at the same level. I almost can't participate in any collector thing at the same level because I made too much sausage over the years. Um, you know, everything, it breaks down into price or variety or scale or, or, or and you know, part of it because you head, know, you know that's me. That, that's there, there's you know, like I'm figures. There's figures that you know that fans perceive as as less than the potential that they could have been, uh, and you know what what the like the, like there was features that might have been cut because of budget or something that would have made that it, toy better. I'd say we we at times you more like you just work on a new idea and you'd have good hopes for it and it just it did work or it didn't work and you had to move on to the next thing. You know, it's just the minutia of those details kind of washes over like, the, you know, just mm -hmm. they the toys come too fast to be dwelling on any details like that. But when things like uh, bot shots come out and you had a whole different set of ideas about what that could be and through the process, it became something different. And, and you're like, eh, you know, eh, that's a bummer because you don't, you guys don't see all the internal turns and twists and, length of time some of the stuff sits out there uh getting presented uh yeah but you know whenever that's whenever the, that's that'd be an interesting story too following some projects that you know people don't know about and why they didn't why you don't know about them yeah on well, any toy line there there yeah. was things like uh, that rick told us about uh there were some headmasters that he saw uh the concept drawings for you know that we had we had Weird Wolf, Skull Cruncher, and Mind Wipe, uh, and then he said there was like a Stingray one that uh, that never saw the light of day, uh, that he saw the concept drawing for that probably doesn't even exist anymore. But it's, it's like, yeah, as as a fan, I would well, find that always, absolutely fascinating. Yeah, there's always you always design and and come up with a lot more ideas than you actually need. You know. Um, you design eight. Oh, we're going to do a wave of six. Okay. And then by the time you get back to the other things, those two don't fit. Um, so all that, uh, that stuff happens every, every day, every day. Um, so I wouldn't look at it like didn't make the line or got canceled. It just was one of the concepts that didn't get chosen. Yeah. Uh, but that happens a lot. Yeah. But you, know, you, you, pit, you always, you always pitch more than you you plan to make because somebody won't like, you know, you got too many villains, or I don't like purple, or, you know, we have too many jets, or whatever, whatever it is, and you got to be, well, how about this guy, you know, ready to go. Push him back to later or something. You know, I mean, yeah. I've, I've worked in manufacturing before, and, you know, I, I know, I, I, I kind of have an understanding of the process, uh, and, and even though it wasn't toys, you know, I, I know that there is, at the end of the day, a you know a lot of people show up and that's your job you don't really there's there there is passion i don't want to say there is no passion in the job but because you've got to have a little passion for for toys in general to work in 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 the industry uh because if you don't like toys then how are you going to make something that that a kid will enjoy you know yep. uh, so <laughs> it's been done <laughs> You'd be surprised, but yeah, it's just I gotta pay the bills. Damn it! I don't care what it is. Well, now, I'm gonna give you a perfect example. My dad, he but he care. shipped them though. He uh, he didn't make them. He didn't care. He didn't care what he was shipping. 
And to yeah, you way, don't always get you I, don't always get people who care whether they're designers or exactly. Or, and, and, you'd and be surprised. Went, hey, Dad, are you doing? And he went, Yeah, here it is. You know, honestly, I mean, you know, I t- like I said earlier, that my dad always okay. uh, critiqued me for playing with uh, with you know He Man figures, the little rubber dolls, uh, and then later on Transformers, he accepted them a little bit more because they actually turned into cars and trucks. But he just didn't understand the concept. Why has that become a robot? You know, I don't understand that. Why? You know, but, and then as I become an adult collector, he he just saw me as throwing my money away. And uh, the for the very first time, uh, I gave my mom and dad a copy of, uh, of Rick's book that I, uh, that I helped with. And my dad sat there and he started paging through the book and looking at it and he's like so you take a lot of these pictures and i'm like yeah and he's like you you really you really enjoy this don't you and I, and I said yeah i said dad it's been a huge part of my life for you know how long and uh, and everything and he's like i had no idea there was all this much stuff i mean there's like 400 pages here you know and he's just he, he just he sat there and paged through it for like 20 minutes and my dad looked up and for the first time in a toy related thing said, I'm proud of you, son. And I, it, it just, just the meaning of that just sunk so deep into me to hear him say, I'm proud of you, son. So for something that was toy related, just, it was, it was a milestone for me as, as a collector and as a, as a toy fan, you know? Uh, but, well, uh, I think we all need to hop off here and everything. Uh, uh, like I said, Aaron, I want to thank you again for joining us tonight. Oh, it's always and, fun. Uh, it's always fun talking to you guys. Uh, you was the first w- one. Wish I saw you more. <laughs> well, uh, you're welcome to join us. Uh, you know, we're always looking for new cast members. You know, if you want to be on <laughs> once a month. Uh, uh, but uh, but you know, whenever I'd uh, I'd set up this uh, this interview with. Uh, Brian and everything, you were the first one the, that popped in my mind. You know, I think it'd be really fun to have Aaron on, uh, t- uh, to have his insights. And, you know, I I'd had an inkling that maybe you had been interviewed for the show, but I, I didn't know for sure. You know, but, it was really, what was really cool for me, and I don't know how they found people, you know, how do you, how do you start that process? Mm-hmm. Um, but when they called me, they, they contacted me through email or, uh, and then, and then called to do kind of an initial early, early kind of, who are you and what's up? Um, the thing they said that made me feel good is no matter who we've talked to about transformers and we've reached out to some guys who've written some books and some fans, you know, they, they went to the websites, I guess. And everybody that we've talked to said, we need to talk to you. And that, that made me feel really, really good that, that the people who they reached out to who are clearly big, time fans you know had made a point to make sure you talk to aaron because he's a guy that knows everything and can talk to you about all that stuff well you worked on the brand for what that yeah you worked on it what 13 Uh, years uh i worked on it 13 years straight as as lead and then i could add another two years of contribution to beast wars um that i wasn't the lead on but i certainly had input and was part of that brainstorming team that did, did so, a lot of stuff. I mean, stuff. It, it, you know, there. So you're looking at 15 years from out of, our ID, our ID on. Yeah. yeah. For, so for uh, you know, out of the 30 plus years that Transformers has been around, you've been around for over half. You was in charge of it for over half of it. So yeah. you yeah, kind of right. are the the father of Transformers for half of the. <laughs> it's a, it's a funny stat. Yeah, that I've thought about because I grew up with Transformers. Mm -hmm. So to have played with it as a kid and purchased some and and then have had the fortunate longevity to work on that brand. uh, You know, I I take pride in that. You know, Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people work on Transformers and they all should be so uh, beloved, you know, and rewarded like I've been with the fans to talk and represent. But uh, yeah. Uh, it is kind of funny, and, and I, I take pride in that. You know, we did a lot of things over those years, and uh, you know, uh, 
and, and it was fun. You know, fun. and, and now, we as we as fans and collectors, you know, we acknowledge that uh, your con- contribution to the brand. I mean, quite honestly, with without you and your team for for a number of years, we wouldn't have Transformers now. Yeah, there. You know, there been there would have been somebody. You know, we were there doing it the way we did it. Um, you know, yeah, and, it wouldn't and, have done it the way you did it. Exactly. That's that's what I'm. <laughs> yeah. I guess what I'm trying to say. Okay. You know, I mean, yeah. it's like. I mean, we I've have, got, I've got we a, have a good time. You know, Botcon okay. toys here that I know that your team's made. You know, like the the Energon Starscream mold. You know, uh, you know, I've I've got one right here. You know, and yeah, <clears throat> it's it's fun to to now to, as as a collector to pick up a toy, and you actually know some of the people that help make that come to be, and that's th- that adds to the to the value of it sentimentally to me personally yeah. and for most creative people outside of like uh, comic book artists you know you never meet the people you know that engage in your 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 things mm-hmm. um you know so i i just i i just enjoy going to the cons and talking to everybody everybody's awesome and you know so many different ways to be in part of this brand uh that's fun for me to watch because i'm i'm like i like that part i like how many different things transformers is Mm-hmm. depending on who you are and when you got into it that's cool absolutely you know it's like you know lexington comic con's coming up here in a month or two and you know it's not specifically a transformer show even though i'm I'm going to be there with orson as uh, as a dealer helper um with capture prey but you know whenever i think about all the guests that's going to be there i'm like Oh, I've really got to meet them. You know, uh, Commander Riker from Star Trek The Next Generation is going to be there. Uh, Jonathan Frakes. Right. I'm like, I am such a huge Trekkie. Whenever I found out he's going to be there, I'm like, <gasps> you know, I, I wanted to meet. They had uh, Brent Spiner and uh, um, uh, who else was there? Brent Spiner and Marina Sirtis last year or a year before last. But their autograph prices were like, crazy expensive and it's like okay i'll oh, get yes. to see them from over there you know but just knowing that they're going to be there in the same roof you know at the same time that'll be cool and yeah you know transformers is that rare type of brand where it's big enough to be known worldwide but it's also small enough to have a family community in my opinion if if that makes any yeah. sense yeah. All right, guys. Uh, Aaron, thank you again, and we'll see y'all next time. All right. We'll <laughs> Good see night, you guys. everybody.